Tinkercad Code Blocks allows you to take code and create 3D designs. So you can create it with one click, then slice it, print it, and use it. I'll explain it all on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Tinkercad.com is a free online software that allows you to use basic shapes like squares, cones, cylinders to create 3D designs. They also allow you to write code for electronics like Arduino. Well, CodeBlocks combines the two, where you can take the code but actually develop a 3D print. Now, in previous videos, I've showed apps for making drawers or custom inserts or also taking the 3D print and twisting it. And these were all written in code, but then you use them as an app. But the idea behind code blocks is you can write your own code and then run it or share it however you want. So let me show you how to make just a simple box app with code blocks. Here's the basic code for my box generator, but let me show you code blocks first. So they've got all the shapes like you find in Tinkercad on the left. Then you've got some modify commands, some control commands, some math operators. You've got an area where you can create variables and also an area where you can create comments or other things. So let's take a look at my little app. You've got three variables for height, length, and width. To create a variable, you go to the left menu and click on create number variable. And then a box will pop up where you can give that variable a name. I'm just going to call it new variable just to show you how it works. Then you click on OK. You'll see that new variable show up on the left hand side. But now we want to go down to the set variable to a number block. Slide that into your code. I'm going to put it at the top here. And then there's a drop down. You click on that and you find the variable. In this case, new variable is the name. So it's a way to set the new variable to a value. We'll get rid of that and you'll see that I have three variables, a height, a length, and a width. And these can be adjusted and this is how you make the box whatever size you want. But now we gotta create a box. So you go over to the shapes and I'll bring a box over. And if you click on the arrow, it expands out where you can set the width, the length, and the height, and also the edge, how curved you want it to be, and then the edge steps. Now we don't want fixed sizes, we want to use the variables. So you drag it from the left and drop it onto that box command. So it's going to use the width variable, the length variable, and the height variable to make the box. Now we can get rid of that one because I've already made one with width, length, and height, and an edge of 1. So it's got a slight curve and edge steps of 10. So let's try this out. I'm going to set the length to 100 millimeters. It defaults to millimeters. So I'm going to set it to 100. And then I'm going to go to the width, and I'm going to set the width to 50. So my box will be a height of 20, a length of 100, and a width of 50. Now I can go to the right-hand screen menu and click on the Step button. So I clicked on it once, and then it's Next, Next, so I step through all the variables. And when I click Next again, it's going to create the box based on those variables. And here it is. This is a box 20 millimeters high. 100 millimeters long and 50 millimeters wide. And it's everything centered in the X, Y, and Z direction. Now any shape can be brought in as a solid or as a whole to take away material. And then it's got all the dimensions. So this is just here just to show you that you can choose from solid to take away material. So here's the one that I made for this app and it's got a variable plus a math operation. In other words, width minus four. So you do that by going over here to the math and grab this third one down where it's zero plus zero. And then you grab your variable. In this case, I'm going to grab width and drop it in the first spot. And then you go to the middle section and you select what you want to do. Add, subtract, divide, multiply. I'm going to actually subtract because I want this box to be smaller so it creates the walls when we put it in place, when we group it together. And I want two millimeters on each side, so I'm going to make it width minus four. So two on each side. So whatever the width is, minus four millimeters. So it'll always, always be a two millimeter wall. And once you have that, you just drag that whole thing into the width spot and let that become the variable. And it'll do the math and do the variable all at once. So I did one for width, I did one for length, and I did one for height. Now you'll notice that width is a minus four, length is a minus four to create the walls, but height is actually a plus four. So I'm making the height of the material being taken away, or the box taking away material, 
four millimeters, so it's two millimeters taller on top and two millimeters taller on the bottom. I actually made the edge a little bit more rounded too on the inside versus the outside. So that way you can easily pick things out of the box. So let's step through the code again. You hit the uh, circular arrow and it resets everything and then I can step through it. And now you can see the whole box inside the solid box. And you can see that there's a little bit on top and a little bit on bottom. That's that extra two millimeters that I added to the height. But you can see the walls forming here from the width and the length. So this is going to create our box. Now I want a bottom on the box, so I'm going to use this move Z axis, the center of the box, to four millimeters, which means it's going to be lifted two millimeters above the bottom of the box, which gives me a two millimeter thick floor of the box. So two millimeter walls and two millimeter base. And now I added a create group command and that groups everything together. So when I click on the next arrow, it groups that hollow into the solid and there's my box. And the whole box is centered X, Y, and Z to the build plate. Now just to show I got the base right, I'm gonna swap the two. I'm gonna make the main box hollow and the other box solid. And so that way when I group these together, at least get to this point, I should be able to see what the box looks like. So I'll do that, I'll click on the next, next, next until I get to that point. And now you can see the solid, which was actually the hole, and the hole, which is actually the solid, you can see a two millimeter wall all the way around the box. So it's gonna give me exactly what I want. From here, I can click on export, and then I can choose to export as a .stl file, so I can slice it and print it, or I can click on shape. And what shape does is allows me to create a shape in Tinkercad. I'll give it a name, large box, give it some description. It's 100 by 50 millimeters. And then what I click on is save shape. And when I do that, it will show up in my Tinkercad screen. If I go to your creations, there it is. So now I can bring it in just like I would any shape in Tinkercad. And I can modify it. I can do things with it. I can't ungroup it. That I'd have to go back to the code blocks, but it matches the size. Now, if I just want to print it, I click on export.stl, export it to whatever slicer you want to use, click on slice, it'll slice it just like any 3D print, and from there you can export it and you can print it. Now, if you don't like the box sitting below the bed, there's an easy command to fix that. Just go over to the menu, grab the move to command, drop it in place, and then for here, we're going to select Z axis, and then we're going to say min, which is the bottom, and we want the bottom to be at zero. So when we run through this, it does everything, creates the box, and then lifts the box up so it's sitting flat on the bed. It doesn't change the export, but this makes it look better. So now let's take a look at a more complicated drawer creator. It's basically the same thing, only added a bunch of variables. I got height, width, and depth but also thickness, so I can set the wall thickness, I can set sections within the drawer, I can set the orientation for the handle, and I can lower the walls of the inner walls. And once those variables are all set, I just click on Run, which is the arrow next to the step, and it'll just build the whole thing automatically. And so there it is, there's a drawer that it created with three dividers and a little handle. Now I can change the handle, if I change the variable to one, it's now gonna make this box sideways and put the handle on the side. So there's a lot of variation you can do if you play with the variables, but it works really well. Now my drawers back here for all my electronic components, I have these clear plastic drawers, and I'd love to be able to 3D print clear plastic like this, but none of my printers can really do this. So that's where PCBWay comes in. They have an SLA process that uses a UTR-8100 transparent that they can spray varnish, or they can do it in a matte finish, depending on which one you want. Both of these are available from their 3D printing service. You just upload your file from their 3D printing menu and you select your options and you select the UTR 8100 transparent and you select the clear spray varnish or matte diffused. And then you give them the rest of the information and then you can get a quote and a delivery time of two to three business days. So check out PCBWay.com if you're interested in this kind of 3D print. So once I got my code and code blocks, I can just change a few variables, make all kinds of boxes and all kinds of drawers with a single click. 
I'll put a link in the description to the Box Creator code block so you can run it. You will need a Tinkercad account, but that's free. Go to the link and you can run it. Now the drawer creator, this took a lot of work. So this is a $3 download. And with that, you'll get a PDF of the instructions and also in that PDF, the link to get to it so you can run it. I want to shout out a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Many of you have been with me for a long time and I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at things.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo down there and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.